Hey, hey, hey. Wow. And a fat Albert impression. You came in hot. Yeah. After our <laughs> hiatus. Yeah, after our hiatus. So just to let people know, well, first, it's episode 50 of Alex and no, look at that. Analyze Billy Joel lyrics. Um, we got unceremoniously canceled, but then we were picked up by TNT. So that, that's why we haven't been here for a while. So the commercial breaks will be longer, but yep. it'll be worth it. It's worth yep. it for the creative freedom. Exactly. Creative freedom and a lot less money. But yeah, yeah. But we get to do an episode abroad once in a while. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. When we get to yeah, honestly, I don't have to vet the guests as much. They can be a little edgier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great for a show like ours that doesn't have guests. It's yet. True. Always yet. Always. Uh, <laughs> we live in, in potential oh yeah <laughs> you That's do right. i guess you do yoga now and then yeah 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 you mentioned you might be doing you hey you mentioned yoga before we started recording and i sometimes will mention this i can never do yoga never ever do uh, yoga. what is the uh what's your sticking point uh because the girl who hurt me the most is a yoga teacher Wow, uh, emotionally though, uh-huh. didn't hurt you with yoga. No, it didn't hurt me with yoga. Broke your heart. Oh goodness, yeah, thoroughly. <laughs> That's why I can't do uh, rob liquor stores. <laughs> you know, give it a chance, man. <laughs> I don't know. I start tearing up in the car when I pull the stocking <laughs> over my head. <laughs> There's two very wet spots here. <laughs> circles that's such a funny idea <laughs> yeah. Just I can't do it, man. <laughs> oh so recently uh, my wife and i moved into a house and i was telling you uh one of the reasons we haven't recorded other than the you know cancellation and being picked up by tnt was it took so long to move it takes so long to get settled it takes so long it's like, what percentage unpacked and settled would you say you are? Four. <laughs> so it's just cardboard boxes and a paint roller. It, the paint is great. We got all that done ahead of time, but Lord, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Did you throw away any percentage of your stuff? Yeah. And probably a good 6% to 10% a lot, which is a lot, actually. It's a lot of stuff for sure. Yeah. But I, you run across stuff that you haven't seen in a decade. Yep. Move from one place to another that it maybe didn't get unpacked at the last effing place. Uh huh. My favorite is we were going to leave it behind. And Mary Jo, bless her heart, had a Jim Bruce kind of sense of humor moment. She mm-hmm. said, bring that because it'll be funny to find it again in 10 years. <laughs> That's great. And she's right. And it's not very big. And what it is, is it's an electric typewriter. Wow. But the kind that was just before home computers became um, uh-huh. reasonable, you could put a floppy disk in it, type yeah. something out. There's literally no one in the world who could possibly fix this if it's broke. It's not, by the way, it works fine. Wow, weird. But I don't know where I would get the new floppy disks for it. Oh, yeah, well, vintage stores. I, you can definitely find them. Yeah. But they probably are like $1,000 each now. I'm sure. And is there a Tom Hanks equivalent of some uh, yeah. popular celebrity who loves this nonsense i think uh colin hanks <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah that's pretty funny it's so dumb it's it's just this and it's really so it was a white typewriter it's now mm-hmm. the finest of smokers yellow as if it has oh, a yeah. habit because it's old plastic it's been yep Burned by time. Yellow computers. Yeah, burned by time. 
Is it a, is it brother? Is that the brand? I think so. Yeah. I think it is a brother. They were hot in that zone between typewriters and computers. Yeah. I took a typewriter to college freshman year and it's still my favorite thing to tell younger people that I work with because <laughs> it is the same as saying like I got typhoid in college. <laughs> I went to college uh, during the Normandy conquest. <laughs> Did you, is it a proper uh, typewriter or an electric? It is a, an electric typewriter without okay. floppy disk. Yeah. I think I meant the Norman conquest, right? Did I say yeah. Norman conquest? You were talking about the yeah. Normans, yeah. It's been- Class, class of 1066. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while, yeah. Is that the right year? Oh no. I'm losing all my bad references. Guys, write in the comments what year the Norman Conquest took place. Do you, do you keep in touch with any of the old guys from the Norman Conquest? Do you ever hear from them? I Norman, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. They'll call me. <laughs> and Norm. And Norm. Norm, and then they shoot him. <laughs> Are they at shooting time yet? I don't know if they had guns. They had guns, right? in 1066 oh they didn't probably right probably not uh, they, they had uh, regular typewriters yeah that's right <laughs> without the floppy disks man this is exactly why we decided against our history podcast <laughs> this is exactly why we should be doing one. Oh my god yeah well think, think how much we would learn in the comments <laughs> oh and how mad yeah that's true uh, oh. Alex and Jim do a deep dive into things they don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Barely remembered seventh grade history. God. Well, it, yeah, I'd be, so I wasn't good then. I didn't remember it then, so. Yeah, no. And all we did was memorize dates. Yeah. So I still have a lot of the dates, but I don't know, like, what happened. Like I, <laughs> I didn't know there was a Norman conquest in 1066, but I guess somebody invaded Normandy. Probably the British invaded France. Those were the only two countries before 1800. See, and I thought the Norman invasion was a Scottish thing, but I don't know. I, I we neither one of us knows. Yeah, <laughs> what a great show. <laughs> um, hey, so we have a little fun game for you folks at home. It's called When Will Sue Get Here? Oh, yeah. Should I explain? Please. Um, Sue has been visiting her father in Ohio for uh, the last week or so. And she said, hey, I'm going to be back Sunday night really late. And I said, oh, good. Then I'll just do the podcast with Jim at like seven. And then we set that up, you and I. And then she was like, hey, oh, I read my ticket wrong. I'll actually be getting home somewhere between seven and eight. So when will Sue be home? Yep, sometime between seven and eight. And right. then the second question was, do you remember? Uh, what song are we doing? Oh, it, it's before or after we start talking. Before, about before or after we start talking about the actual song. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and before we get there, by the way, the song is James. And you picked uh, because it's yeah. named after me or I'm named after it, or we both have the same name, but no one knew about each other. Right. Which is probably more likely. Did you check with your family? I you were so named. After. Well, you were born before the song came out. I think so. Yeah. 68. So we should check with Billy Joel. Yeah. Or so if he heard about a 10 year old kid. <laughs> he could have written about my grandfather. Oh, because I will tell you something about my grandfather. My grandfather definitely did what was expected of him. Very, very grandfatherly to keep the family together and had a history of making choices based on what was better for everybody else so he right. could have been who billy joel was writing about okay different from you who you make choices that are good for no one <laughs> exactly <laughs> your family yourself 
Who does this benefit? No one? The greater good? No. All right. Ball. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> and I will tell jokes at the casino. That's right. I'm finally, but well, it does benefit the casino. That is true. That's true. It makes people sadder and they need to drink more. So yep. that's always good for the casino. Drives them out to the machines. I've always, uh, an observation I made about casino shows is uh -huh. a lot of casino shows are early shows, like six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock would even be the late, a late show. And this is my speculation. I think you don't want to risk putting on a show for people who have already lost everything. Yes, that's a good call. Because that is going to be a tough crowd and a rough night. Yeah. Get them like they're finished their hangover. They finally ate something. Yeah. At like three or four. Yeah. They're like, I can't go straight back to the machines. What else is going on? Yep. It's Jim. Jim's going on. Jim's going on. And they still in the back of their mind are like, tonight I'm going to win. Okay. Yeah. 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 So they're like, yeah, all you can do is uh, whip up their excitement. Yeah, they're entertaining the notion that there's a victory for someone. And the truth is, there is. It's the casino. Yeah. And that's why the, it's so nice. Yep. I did the live show, by the way, last week in front of a real crowd and got real money. And it was so effing nice. It was great. Fantastic. There, Where was oh, it? This was in San Luis Obispo. Uh, Beautiful. It's really lovely wine country. I, I think I may have mentioned this to you before, but I've done many shows there and I can't have a bad set if I were to try. The audience there for some reason is just always ready to have a good time. But then the one of the comics who was also on the bill managed to do it. So good for him. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he cracked the code. Yeah, I'll tell you a quick funny story and then we'll, we'll get into some lyrics. Uh, I did this show. There's another comic on the bill. Her name is Orchid, and she's a very funny lady. Uh, she was, uh, I think, featuring. She had a good set. They give you drink tickets. I was driving. We, we shared the load as far as that goes. I was driving, which meant she could drink. Right. So she decided to use her two drink tickets for two glasses of wine, which she got at the same time. <laughs> Always a great way to get your wine. That is brilliant. So she gets her two glasses of wine and she's a, she's a wee lass. So uh -huh. her body weight is not really conducive to much alcohol or it's great. It's efficient. <laughs> yeah. It's cheaper for sure. So I found out what kind of tipsy she is and the kind of tipsy she is, is unbelievably honest. Oh, so the Ooh. comic who had a terrible set. And I watched this while I'm drinking a LaCroix because I couldn't drink. By the way, they have different flavors of LaCroix. Yeah. Uh, I believe everyone is whatever berry slash battery acid. Everyone. So it's <laughs> cherry ba battery acid. Star yeah. yeah. Complimous. Battery acid. Who the fuck likes LaCroix? Is I drank it because I'd never had one. And I was like, well, this is terrible. It's a fallback beverage. Man, you have fallen way back then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, I know it's a writer's room beverage. Jeez. Every writer's room is stocked with it because it, I think it costs nothing. I think yeah. you go to the store and they will like, would you want to take this with you? <laughs> uh, and everyone says no. And that's why stores always have so much of it yeah um, yeah it's awful yeah there's i don't understand its success it makes no sense to me anyway and, they're our new sponsor yeah oh son of a no 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 it's good they like this i, I love it i like battery acid <laughs> not going to get away from that description though because it is exactly correct so i'm drinking this little beverage and i'm watching my friend and this comic who had been just awful and mm -hmm. just give you the idea he had he said the c word the oh. f word uh the p word and uh, one of the many uh, the other f words <laughs> in different combinations for his entire set wow so he just threw him up in the air caught him and said this is the order i'll say him in now throw him up in the air just that was his set 
And uh, he said to Orchid, he said, uh, how, well, how did you enjoy my set? And Orchid goes, dude, you are not funny. <laughs> <laughs> and then wow. he was so, she was so brutal that I think he thought she was kidding because it seemed like that was excessive. No one would say that. Yeah. And he goes, no, like the beginning part was pretty good. And she goes, dude, you should quit comedy. <laughs> and I'm drinking my LaCroix and I'm just like, oh, this is great. And then she saw me, smiled and just kept going. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yep. Wow. Wow. He would do well to take her advice. Is he yeah. wasn't good. And he won't, most likely. No. no he never do. Yeah, what'll, the only thing that'll make him quit is the thing that makes some people quit, which is progressively not getting booked. Yeah. Because then you're not even, it's not even so much that you quit, it's just that everyone quit on you and then you're done. Right. And then you go have like angrier sets at smaller places. Yeah. And that works less well. And then you, I think you go alt-right podcast. <laughs> yep. And then yeah. you become rich. <laughs> <laughs> you get super rich and open a comedy club. Yeah, my favorite thing that I've ever seen at an open mic, and I've seen it a few times, is when some open micer who's been doing com open mic comedy for years or however long, doesn't matter, but the key part is when they get up and go and announce their retirement. <laughs> Funniest thing in the world. Why? I know. It's similar to me, again, similar to me and announcing my retirement from, you know, basketball. <laughs> oh, they, are you yeah. sure? Yeah. yeah. I decided that since I was never doing it, I should just stop. None of it makes sense. But officially. Yeah. Yeah. So you picked James is the song that you picked. James. And here's, oh yeah, that's funny. You, you sang James, but the high, higher version, but that's the note. That, I, I think it is. Yeah, that was great. Was that intentional? <laughs> that could be the note. What? Was that intentional that you did that? Because that was great. Uh, kind of, I oh. guess. I just it, listened to it. Yeah, I listened to it a couple times. And- uh, I think it's very funny that it's the first word in the song. Yeah, right to the point. Um, no well. He doesn't say, well, James. <laughs> <laughs> right at it. Musically, uh, musically, I want to get this thought out. Tell me what you think. Man, this couldn't be more 70s if it tried. Do oh, man. Yes, I kept thinking of the Taxi theme song. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I, thought, like, I kept seeing like... Um, montages of like a guy in a shitty 70s business suit walking down the street yep being sad about his work life while that song was playing yeah i had that's funny taxi is perfect the other thing i pictured was one of those movies from that you could only make in the 70s because you were allowed to make movies still where uh -huh. the main character was kind of a sad sack and it was a little bit funny it was sad but in the towards the end, not even the end, but towards like the third act, something brutally unpleasant happens. Yeah. With that, I don't, younger folks might not remember this from movies, but there used to be this thing like in a 70s movie, like, or even the 60s too. Do you remember the movie Lord Love a Duck? No. No, I don't. Uh, starring, um, he, he played the main monkey and planet of the apes Roddy mcdowell Roddy mcdowell <laughs> okay Roddy mcdowell Roddy mcdowell's in this movie and he's wacky and he's just he's he challenges the status quo he's crazy and fun and he makes weird noises like he'll go Rah! and he's <laughs> a character who's challenging your and it's funny and it's a romp and then he murders this girl and it's not played for laughs. It's tragic as hell. Yeah. And 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 you you don't understand why it's in the same movie. Yep. But the reason it's in the same movie is because the filmmaker recognized 
Yeah, that's often in one person's life. Really cool stuff. And then some, and it's great. Yeah. And I don't want to watch it again. It's also a hard watch. Yeah, there were a lot of movies that you had to like go talk about. Yeah. And get over. There yeah. were a lot of movies you had to like survive. Yeah. Um, in those times. And the tricky but, part, the way they got you is it because it wasn't a bunch of things. It wasn't like, you know, you can watch a movie and people start getting shot from the opening frame till the till the credits. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay, well, people get shot in this movie. Right. And then you're like, oh, as long as my the three guys I like. So yeah. Sorry. But you can watch a 70s movie and it's about a nice family and then the kid gets shot. <laughs> yeah. And now those were like popular movies. Yeah. And they did well. And now they still make those, I think. But they're art house. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's probably true. Better, like weird art house like uh happiness yeah like yeah happiness would have been like the number three movie in the country for four weeks yes in the 70s and in the 70s they knew how to make a short version of that film <laughs> yeah you could they could do that to you in 90 minutes so you didn't have to be three hours long oh go there for 90 minutes and go oh i'm, I'm on i'm unhappy that's not good yeah i have to go to a coffee shop <laughs> talk to somebody who's seen it and check and what a great yeah i missed that too like my buddy and a buddy my buddy walker and i like to do that is watch the movie and then one of our favorite parts of the movie is go chat about the movie right and there's a lot of movies that are fine to watch but there's not much to say and that's more and more of the thing is like yeah there's nothing left because they the movie says everything yeah Gives you all the pieces, yeah. And then you just and walk out of the theater and look at each other and you know, all right, we saw that. That's everything that happened. Yeah, the best. I do I don't have to try to figure out what Batman was thinking? <laughs> uh, I guess Mor Morbius is that what it's called? The Marvel movie? Yes. Is getting rough reviews, but I read one review that makes me think. Oh, I bet it's actually good. She's back. Sue's back, everybody. Sue's back. Hi, baby. Now, does that count as after the song we started talking about the song or not? Wow. I oh yeah, there's a, there's some wiggle That's there because we because we mentioned the song and then it was immediate tangent. And we we even discussed a detail about it. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Hi, oh, hi. Oh. oh, I'm so happy you're back. All right. <laughs> See you in a week. <laughs> He's leaving again. I don't. I don't understand. I, yeah, well, 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 it was a good moment. You guys had a moment. Yeah, we'll have more. That's how you keep it fresh. Is just by not being there very often. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that counts, but um, I think so. We started to, and then we had a long tangent. Yeah. Um, we did not get into the lyrics except for the first word. Yes, although we did discuss the quality of the song, which is the music. And again, I think what a pretty little song. You know, I was reading about it. And um, this album, The Turnstiles, they, uh, the record company was trying to turn him into Elton John. And so they put him with Elton John's backing band to record this album. And he uh, did a little of that and then uh, said, I don't like this. I'm going back to New York and I'm gonna do stuff with the people I like. But this song in particular, I thought like, oh, this is I think what the studio wanted. Yeah. It was a little, not the best of Elton John for sure. Yeah. But some of that vibe. If he had stayed in that, we would not remember him today. He did the right thing because yeah. he would be somebody you remembered that was almost as good as bread, <laughs> but not quite if it was this. Yeah, oh, for sure. And this is the kind of song, it's not even a bad song. It's more just, this is a song that could not possibly escape its decade. No, this is not timeless. 
No, and you it's would very timeful. And you wouldn't hear it on retro shows either, because retro shows, if they're playing 70s, are doing one of two things. They're playing disco. It's just a show where we're playing Donna Summer and the right. Beatles, or rock from that era. Yes. You're and not hearing rightly so. Yep. You're not hearing bread. No, which is a shame. Yeah, they're yeah, de decent band, but you are going to hear the Eagles, and so sometimes you'll get that bread quality because they did record some softer nonsense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I say nonsense, but they're good songs, but only because Heartache Tonight makes you go, oh, do whatever you want. Because Heartache yeah. Tonight is about the finest Eagle song there is. I agree. We agree again. You, you uh, you can leave it in the parking lot. It's such a great line. <laughs> it's, a, it's. I feel like that's a. It should be uh, co-opted to just use as a burn. Yeah, that song is dirty. It's great. It's people. There's somebody in that song got a BJ for sure. You can sing real good. Yep. Yeah, anybody can sing it really well. And it's got the part where he goes, Whoa! which is great. <laughs> Not enough of that. Nope. Not enough of that. It got left behind. <laughs> All right. Uh, did, I, did I fire up the lyrics? I did. Uh, do you want me to go first or you? Oh, I can't remember whose turn it is. You go. All right. Um, this is how long it's been. We don't actually have an official thing like that. So you, you didn't forget anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. James, we were always friends from our childhood days. And we made our plans and we had to go our separate ways. I like, by the way, in the lyrics I'm looking at, which is on billyjoel.com, mm -hmm. it's Sep, uh, Skycom, our wet ways, <laughs> uh, separate ways to let you know how it's said. That's interesting. That's fine. I went on the road, you pursued an education. Tell you one thing I like right away. There's no hamstrung weird rhymes here. No. And it, right. and it lays it out pretty great. It is on turnstiles, and I don't think any of these dudes are supposed to be James. I'm looking in the background. No, I don't think any of them are James. Mm, well, maybe. Unless it's that dude in the back carrying books. <laughs> it might be the business guy. That's what I was thinking, the guy in the yeah, back. We were always friends from our childhood days and we made our plans and we had to go our separate ways. So it makes me think, he says, and we made our plans and we had to go our separate ways. So I don't think they ever had plans together. They were just friends. Just friends. Because otherwise it would be, so we had to go our separate ways. Right. It, it's, there's a weird non-tension about it. Yeah. <laughs> not, no, not, no plan got disrupted. Nope, it's just melancholy. It I, is melancholy in that 70s way where it's just like, hey, we knew each other and then yeah. we both left. Well, that's funny because there are a lot of songs like that from the 70s. You could make a whole list of just songs about people who kind of grew apart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we're, there's not even like the hint that they were trying to stay together. Nope. It's like, hey, just thinking about you. It's like a uh, fucking phone message. Yeah, it really is. It's as long as a phone message. And you're absolutely right. This is the message of we haven't talked in not even 10 years, 20. They 20, were friends when they were 12. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, when I was thinking about this podcast and trying to remember the song, because I hadn't listened to it in a long time, I, for whatever reason, my brain thought it was about his brother. Like he had a brother who uh, stayed home and did, you know, went to school while he was off being a rock star. And I was like, oh, that's an in interesting, intense song about family dynamics in my head. <laughs> And then I listened to it and I was like, oh, he barely fucking knew this guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's dumb. That's funny. At best, if it was, it was like, that's another person he thought of when he wrote the lyrics. But no, I think you just assume, you just put that on it. That's pretty funny. 
Yeah, my brain tried to uh, give it a better reason to be a song <laughs> and it resisted. Man, it really is. Yeah, it's, I like that it's barely about anything. I also do like uh, a 12 year old who insists on being called James. Yeah. On Long Island. So that's a 12 year old who dresses nice. Yeah. Who does that and, it, and wasn't told to. No, 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 that's his thing. Yeah, that's a, he's got a button down shirt. And his parents uh, work at the bowling alley. Yeah. They don't care. My sister had, a, I'm a James, by the way. My sister and I had a conversation the other day because we bought the house and, you know, I'm showing her, the, giving her a tour of the house. And she goes, it always bugged me the way you dressed as a kid because I knew how important it was to fit in. And mom didn't know. But also, apparently, you didn't care. <laughs> and if you see pictures of me from my childhood, nice little mop-headed kid, perfectly nice-looking kid, but just the oddest clothing. Yeah. It sometimes looked like... Your choices? Oh, huh? Your choices, though? Sometimes, but like I looked... Sometimes you'd go, oh, street urchin. They couldn't afford anything. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you'd go, uh, he wants to be a cowboy. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'd be wearing a bolo tie. Oh, I did the bolo tie phase. And, Way too late. Uh, oh, yeah. And in weird, just pants that were never, that, pants that probably would fit in now. So out of fashion they were. <laughs> and definitely high water, but I don't think I did care. And I uh, think it was more that I was unaware that I should. I feel like I've mentioned before that um, I never got to choose my clothing. It was all my mother's decision. Um, and I told her that I'd like to show the Dukes of Hazard. So she was like, ah, I will buy you a t-shirt that has says the Dukes of Hazard on it. And she did, and she got me a t-shirt with uh, Daisy's Jeep on it of all the cars in that show <laughs> the one that the, the girl had oh so i wore it to school i'm gonna I'm, let me think how many times oh once it was once <laughs> oh, exactly that's... one time oh gosh that's great yeah uh, there was a lot of that a lot of like no and i'm also not wearing the little shorts mom come on <laughs> and i had the ass for it oh you did you still do come on but it, it, you gotta leave them wanting something <laughs> that's so <laughs> funny oh, oh that's... she's so dumb yeah oh moms brought to you by lacroix <laughs> <laughs> all uh, right so so he pursued an education you're up yeah what does he say? I went on the road. I went on the road. You pursued an education. No judgment. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it. Well, we know who we're talking about. <laughs> James, do you like your life? Can you find release? Mm. And will you ever change? Will you ever write your masterpiece? Are you still in school? Living up to expectations, James. So now he's starting in. Yeah. I'm superior to you because I'm doing what I want. And you're living up to expectations. So does that mean, so this is what this made me think, is that the they maybe had music in common? Oh, maybe. I was like, did they both take piano lessons from the same lady and now he's <laughs> teaching piano? Oh, yeah, that's probably their whole relationship is he had to sit on a bench for 10 minutes while James finished his lesson. And then they yeah. would yammer a little bit while the lady went to the bathroom. And they would talk about what you could do with music. Right. Like, I want to be a concert pianist or... I don't know if kids say that. Maybe they do. Yeah. But they maybe James, they might. 
Yeah, they both thought about themselves maybe as becoming famous, maybe, but James had a practical streak. He was like, oh, you know, someday I could give piano lessons. Right. <laughs> what a great, hilarious reason to learn the piano. <laughs> I don't want to do anything else with it. That's I just want a stream of fucking kids coming into my house. Yeah, I want to hear the worst, them at their worst, and say goodbye to them at their slightly betterest. <laughs> yep. Uh, I want to constantly be going, well, no, not that. Well, I, it would appear, so this is what I wonder, will you ever write your masterpiece? Is, is that musical? That's what I'm assuming, but it, it doesn't have to be, but it makes sense to me. So... The cool thing is, by the way, this is a very 70s song or 70s piece of art in that way, which is there ain't a lot of too much information to nail down too obviously. Right. It's that whole artisty thing of like, well, does it matter? Yeah. Does it matter which kind? Yeah, right. I'm going to say yes, because um, listening to it earlier, I never thought that it was music. I was okay. like, oh, he's talking about a book. James w wants to be an author or something. Okay. So he's asking him about his line of work. Um, you know, and that track's pretty good because uh, I went on the road because I decided that that's how I'm going to get where I need to be with music. Right. And you got an education. So you went and got a literary degree. Uh, Secretly, I feel inferior to you because I feel dumb and ha ha I have money and you don't. Right. So I'm going to be uh, mean to you about your masterpiece. Yeah. And by the way, Billy Joel, you had not yet written yours. Nope. Um, I want to go back to one line because it's gross. Uh, <laughs> James, <laughs> do you like your life? Can you find release? Yeah. That probably does literally mean that. I don't know. It also, this is also the era, the same time they were making these movies and this kind of music existed was when pop psychology was first really coming to the fore. Yeah. I think. And everybody was concerned with whether or not they could find release or closure or things, those things. Yeah. The uh, key buzzwords. Yeah. But man, release, yeah, really. Release does kind of only mean one thing to me. So. Remember, in the it was like the late seventies, where suddenly every movie mentioned orgasms. Oh yeah, and it was like it was a, it was a real uh, female orgasm specifically. Yeah, and then it was like, oh boy, we're we're laying everything bare. Surely this is as deep as cinema can go. I, uh, as Which a, is not how you do it, by the way. No. As a kid, when I was a kid and you went to the movies, uh, you just went with whatever movie your parents wanted to see. There were a few kids' movies, but you saw a lot of adult movies, particularly if your parents weren't paying attention to what the movie was about. Right. I saw the four seasons <laughs> as a kid. <laughs> which has nudity in it, but also not like 20-year-old new bio nudity, like 30-year-old nudity, which is still <laughs> pretty great, still pretty great. Oh, yeah. It's Alan Alda. So <laughs> uh, Alan Alda's in that. And of course, it's actually a pretty good movie because it deconstructs uh, the, the good guy character because Alan Alda is this really guy you can rely on. And he really doesn't, people don't really care for him until he finally has his breakdown and uh, they finally get to tell him off. That's great. And it's called the four seasons and they go through the seasons of the year, but also seasons of friendships. Uh, and that, you know, when you're nine, that's what you want to see at the theater. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I had a similar thing where my parents were in, uh, five bowling leagues. Um, so they bowled every night of the week, pretty much. Lord. Uh, and what they did with us was send us across the way to the movies. 
is on military bases. The bowling alley is right next to the movie theater, usually. Yeah. So they would just give us money and go see whatever they're playing. So we saw uh, everything uh, that same time next year, speaking of Alan Alda, um, Rancho Deluxe, I think it was called. Just like insane late 70s, a lot of psychedelic stuff. Yep. Um, soundtrack movies, just insanity. A lot I... of public defenders getting shot in hallways. <laughs> I saw a boy and his dog in the theaters. <laughs> Do you remember that movie? Vaguely. So it's post-apocalyptic. Jason Robards is in it. Plays a complete lunatic. He's great. And uh, uh, Miami Vice was starred. Um, who started Miami Vice? Uh, the TV version. Don Johnson. Don Johnson. So it's a young, young Don Johnson is the star. And he has a dog that he can hear telepathically because of the radiation <laughs> and they uh he they find that there's a bunch of humans living underground but they're all infertile so they want him to get all their women pregnant and he thinks he's going to have sex but they hook him up to most more or less a milking machine wow and then in the end he escapes with this girl and it's kind of romantic because they're going to start over and be a normal kind of human couple but they're he, they're out of food, and his dog is dying. Oh no! Oh, and, no. Dog, and his dog says it's okay, it's okay. And she goes, "It's time to let him go." The next scene, he's walking with his dog, and his dog is lip, licking his chops, and they have a little conversation. And you realize that he has killed the lady and fed her to the dog. <laughs> wow! And he says the most gross sexist but funny because it was self-aware he goes ah, i wish we didn't have to do that she was still good <laughs> <laughs> no and i saw that as a child in the theaters oh the 70s you guys it's a good movie wow. um it really is a good movie it's just nuts uh, nuts james you are so relied upon ev Guy, come! Everybody knows how hard you tried. Hey, oh look what a job you've done, carrying the weight of family pride. Man, oh. that's pretty great. Now he really is just saying. He just kind of is saying, "You're not. You you can't like this." Yeah, I feel like he's saying, "Ha ha." Idiot, you made the wrong decision. Yeah, and absolutely. Now, oh, look at you. It's very sarcastic, I think. Yeah. Oh, just look at what a job you've done. There's no way to say that it's not sarcastic. Yeah. Unless you're British or something. <laughs> oh, look at what a job you've done. Yeah, that does sound nice. You're right. <laughs> it might be nice. Oh, look at what a job you've done. Carrying the weight of family pride yeah idiot you could be out here with me rocking yeah you could be out here in um not <laughs> in uh wearing this horn hat because that's what he would have been done when that was his first band that's what oh yeah attila you missed out on attila you could be out here being hardcore <laughs> you missed the attila boat bro sorry Oh, look what a job you've done carrying the weight of family pride. Yeah, there's no part of this that's complimentary. I think that's why I thought it was about his brother. Yeah. Because of that line. And now I realize he's being such a dick to complain that his friend has to carry the weight of a whole different family that he doesn't even know. Yeah. Why is he involved in their business? Do you think this is a mean I, phone message? <laughs> yeah. Do you think based on this that he's James's family is probably a little better to do than Billy's family? He feels a little bit like that, like his family. Maybe is, that, or at least a little more invested in like education and structure. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. It's a it's a family that people admire. And maybe Billy Joel's family isn't. 
or at least the character he's playing, but I think maybe his actual family. This is a, a wild side note, but I just remembered that you have said sky comma twice. And I heard that phrase for the first time an hour before we started recording. Okay, now let me ask you, were you watching Gary Goldman? No, but I was reading a tweet where somebody was talking about Gary Goldman. That's, I love Gary Goldman. Um, so I don't know the joke, but it's pretty clear what you mean by that. So if you look it up, he did a set on Conan. And it, I'll just, I'll tell you a little backstory because it won't ruin it, but it's about a documentary. It's a bit he does about a documentary. And the whole thing's about this documentary. And apparently the, his set was so well received that a bunch of people tried to find the documentary so they could watch it. No such documentary exists. <laughs> Great. It's a bit. Fantastic. But he paints such a beautiful picture that people were just convinced, oh, I got to watch this documentary. He's so great and compelling. Yeah. And funny. Yeah. And I, I always think he is, oh, let's do this real quick. Oh, hell yeah. That's Whoa. My, that was that's Mancha. Oh. Yeah. Hey, baby. Mancha's a good, good boy. He's a good boy. Cute. He is uh, not 100% well, but he's on some medicine and he's doing pretty good. Great. Yeah. We have that in common, kitty cat. Yeah. Um, oh, you're not, or your cat not 100% well, or are you talking about you? But not, neither one of us is 100% well. Yeah. Uh, me too. I'm not 100% well. I know. I think I ever have been 100% well, but it's more. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> Up here. Yeah. Okay. A little bit here. And a little down here. <laughs> I default to saying sky comma a lot of times because I'll forget the word and I'm like, well, everybody will know what I mean. It's true. I believe it's an apostrophe. That's the word. Is it? Yeah, it's apostrophe. That's, That's right. Okay. All right. I did it. That's from our seventh grade English podcast. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so many it's Norman. It's not Norman's conquest. Right. Well, then you could use an apostrophe. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It is the Norman invasion. I'm, I'm gonna do an experiment. Sue. Sue? Yeah. What year was the Norman conquest? 1066. Nope, that's correct. I mean, here's how I'm I'm assuming that's correct because that's what we both thought it was. Yeah. And what are the odds that we're both wrong? Now, what does Sue think it was about? Who was it? Oh, yeah. Can, do you, what happened? Was it Britain invading part of France? We don't know. Okay, great. All right. <laughs> I, I'll explain all of this later. Oh, and I guess the Brits were called the Normans. Is that what it was? I don't know. Okay. I think it has something to do with the piece of land that later became known as Normandy. Okay. That was I, again, I think it was owned by Norman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I believe, yes, it was Norman Fell, right? Norman Fell, Correct. right. Correct. He, he uh, got killed because he was looking at the camera instead of the battle lines. That's right. That's what it was. <laughs> James, you've been well behaved. You've been working so hard, but will you always stay someone else's dream of who you are? And this is my favorite. Do what's good for you, or you're not good for anybody. Well, put that on a river stone and sell it to me at Target. Yeah, that is uh, not the worst bit of advice. That's actually reasonably good advice. And when this song came out, it was probably pretty fresh advice. Yeah. Um, it, and it was advice you heard a lot uh, during the pandemic. It's like, you know, you got to take care of yourself. Yeah. You can't take care of other people. And then a lot of people were like, oh, self-care, that's going to be my excuse to do whatever I want and not care about anything else. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to be all our excuses. I'm just be speaking for myself. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to do anything. So that's self-care. <laughs> now I'm going to lie down and watch 35 Law and Orders. 
Yeah. And when I go to the doctor, he says, you can't have the meat. And you go, yeah, but self-care. Maybe self-care, I can. Bacon, bacon is self-care. Maybe I can have that. Uh-huh. Taking care of myself first before I worry about my heart. <laughs> <laughs> my heart comes second. <laughs> oh. James, I went on the road. You pursued an education. Oh, well, I'm gonna keep going because it's two lines. James, how are you gonna know for sure everything was so well organized? Hey. <laughs> so now everything is so secured and everybody else is satisfied. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, reiteration of the previous point which is so everybody else is happy but right about you yeah you uh, didn't do what was good for you and now you're no good for anybody so here's by the my, way here's my new theory how, uh, there there is no james james is what could have happened to billy joel if he didn't learn the piano oh okay or so, if he learned the piano and stuck with classical Right. Because I think about that too, because, you know, he's a very good pianist, tried to write that masterpiece, go right. down that road, and then. Uh, was a real classical guy. Yeah, I could definitely see that. I find it really funny, though. If it is a different guy, he's sarcastic with him. Oh, you're so happy. He's sarcastic with him, but then gives him good advice. And how many times have you been in a conversation with someone who was being a genuine prick, but then tried to shuffle over to him just being helpful. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that yep. uh, I, the whole my whole nine years in Los Angeles was that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Your problem is this, 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 and this. Look, I'm, I want to help you. Well, I can do self-care. I don't need you to help me. Yeah, I can do self-care. I can do self-release. <laughs> <laughs> and uh nobody else is satisfied god ever oh that's so great because yeah you're maybe james is just the the road he didn't go down i think that's the most generous interpretation for billy joel himself otherwise he's being a real dick to james yeah i think it's like um i'm cool billy <laughs> now but I could have been boring James. Yeah. And there's also a sense. So if it is about him, about who he is and who he could have been, there's also, you know, that that person he may have been that he should, he hopes he never is, is still out there. Oh yeah. You know, like the flowers for Algernon kind of thing, but not that extreme, but <laughs> like the guy that you hope not to be but he's there and if you're not careful right and lord knows that's true for everybody really yes one bad album and you're james again well like a, like you get to be an older fella i think about this sometimes i'm like so you become an older fella mm -hmm. track your thinking so that you don't become that old fella who's now racist or right. who constantly hits on the waitress yes or constantly says the way things were when i was 22 is how they should be forever yeah there's two genders yeah or whatever the case may be yep there's yeah absurd by the way i love that desantis has picked a fight with disney because i don't care what republicans say People are always getting aside with Disney, including Republicans. Yeah. Because there's too much stuff they have that you like. So how yeah. good yeah. luck. You'll never be as good as Disney at propaganda. No. Nope. But I do think it's funny that um, it's now basically Fox versus Disney. Yeah, that is pretty great. Yes. So please, by all means, destroy each other. Yeah, absolutely. But and at the end of the day, you guys... You know, TBS and TNT. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's, hey, we know where our bread is buttered. With that's LaCroix. right. LaCroix, butter slash battery acid. 
LaCroix for when you want your stomach to be a little bloody. LaCroix. Is there anything else in here? <laughs> All right, throw me a LaCroix. LaCroix. Is the name supposed to sound French? Because it doesn't quite work. <laughs> uh, is it me? You have one? Yes, it is you. James, do you like your life? Can you find release? And will you ever change? When will you write your masterpiece? Do what's good for you, or you're not good for anybody. James. If your interpretation is right, and it could be, and, again, and it's a good interpretation, I like the reiteration of, will you ever write your masterpiece? Because it's maybe in a, a it's maybe just saying, and all those idiots who want me to be the other thing are still there, running their mouth. Yep, no masterpieces coming out of them. Including my mom, who I will write another song about later. <laughs> uh, I do love how normal all the names are in his songs. Yeah, true. Laura and James and Diane. Yeah. Oh, the best. Well, you know, it's funny. We've talked about this before, but it's always funny to me the names that a comic uses. Yes. To a comic, it means this thing. Yep. The, the eternal thing that happened to the name Karen, of course, has been destroyed. Sure. Yeah. By the way, I, I think that'll be interesting to see. Do you think the name Karen will go the way of Adolf? I think it will. I oh, think. I oh. Wow. I feel like it was on the way out anyway. Yeah. There weren't a lot of young Karens. That's true. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it has it can survive. Yeah. Well, we're done with. But here's what I wanted to say about the lyrics. In the first time he says it, it's will you ever write your masterpiece? Then in this one, in this uh, verse, it's when will you write your masterpiece? Oh, yeah. Um, which I think you can look at as more hopeful for James. Yeah. And he's not asking if, but when. Yeah. Or he's maybe putting more pressure on James and being a bigger dick. And if it's himself. When are you going to write it? If it's himself, he hasn't written it yet, right? Because we haven't gotten scenes from an Italian restaurant yet. No. We haven't gotten any of it. I don't, at this point, have we gotten hits? No, right? We've gotten Piano Man. Piano Man, okay, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I don't know what it did on the charts. It wasn't number one. Yeah, wow. I like that interpretation where it's it's the road that he's glad he didn't travel. Yeah, I mean, it is that in whether James is real or not. True. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Going, I made, you know, probably having a bad day on the road and wanting to quit and trying to convince himself he did the right thing. <laughs> yes. I'm not going to college. Right? <laughs> like, no, no. This is how shitty my life would be if I had stayed there and gone to, you know, Long Island University. Yeah. Um, the only school he'd legally be allowed to go to. Um, so I think this is like a pep talk for himself. Fuck, this is like his little fuck the haters. Yeah. Right thing. It's you a know, pretty song. Not doing the right thing is James. Yeah. And, and it might be that time too where James, so it might also be the thing that James has a few things he does wish he had that he's not mentioning like, you know, food and money. You know, <laughs> yeah, because you definitely go through that as an artist. You go through that period where you're like, "Oh boy, oh, yeah. my friend has this." Uh, yeah, everybody might have been right. Yeah, yeah, comedy was stupid. <laughs> I should have. I should have joined the army. Hey. Um, I also occurs to me if he's being. I'm thinking of real asshole Billy Joel. Maybe he doesn't go by James. He goes by Jim, but in this song, a fucking Long Island asshole, if you go by Jim, would call you James to be a dick. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> that's a... 
And it would explain why he says it a hundred times in the song. So James, yo, James. You still yeah. in college? James. How's that masterpiece, James? Oh yeah. And that guy's going, Jim. It's Jim. It's Jim. It's Jim, and I'll get to it. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you why, by the way, if your name is James, why you get called Jim, James, or Jimmy. Uh, it depends on how many also were in your class. That's why. Oh, yeah. I was always called Jim because we had a guy in our class named James who preferred to be called James. Mm -hmm. And I, much like with my clothing, never had a preference. <laughs> I just was like, uh, yeah, that seems like a version of my name. That's fine. Sure, sure. And I didn't mind being called Jimmy. And then there were, I one point, I feigned annoyance at being called Jimmy because I came to understand that people expected me to be bothered by some version of my name. <laughs> and there's a lot of my life which is like that. I'm like, when my parents got divorced, I realized, oh, I got to act like this bothers me. Otherwise, they won't shut up about it. So I was like, oh, no. I'm so sad. Oh, uh, two Christmases. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, I never had that name problem. There was only one other Alex I ran into <clears throat> in high school, and his last name was Bohinko. I don't know, but uh, he was an Alex B. So we were in uh, geometry class. We had these weird desks where two people would sit at them. And so I would sit with him so that when the teacher would call on us, we would just both look at each other until the teacher got upset and pointed at somebody else. <laughs> and I, now I still don't know how to do uh, triangles. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah, and then I went to the 10 year high school reunion and he was on the big board of people who died. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And is there a conspiracy amongst your classmates that you're the one who really died? <laughs> <laughs> Not among, I, that's my theory. <laughs> Dumbest conspiracy theory in the world, in my opinion, is there's a conspiracy that Elvis is the child that died and that his brother is the one who lived. Oh. But that's stupid because that would mean as a baby, they started calling the other baby Elvis, which would mean that person is Elvis. Right. It's yeah. the dumbest thing in the world. I, uh, <laughs> well, I wish it was the dumbest thing in the world, but yeah. Yeah, you're right. It probably doesn't even rate. Yeah, that's true. We're in a brand new age, baby. Did you like taking a break from Ukraine jokes to write four days of Will Smith jokes? <laughs> yes. Um, and then that got tiresome so fast. Oh my gosh, yes. That stories burn out at different rates for sure but that one was like within two days i was like please no more the uh the amount of twitter jokes on that topic was fascinating jokes and the memes yeah you could just hear people scrambling to get to their yeah. little i thought of so a couple things i said but then there was one i was like oh this is pretty good when i google it, i was like there's 40 versions of this. Okay, maybe not. That was just, that's always disheartening. I'm like, oh, wow. Lord. It was disheartening. It was, the problem with it was that it happened Sunday night. And then, so all night Twitter jokes. Oh, yeah. Uh, I had to go <laughs> and write something for the next night. Yeah. So by then, the well is fresh. Free. Yeah. Jimmy all the takes. Jimmy Kimmel had one joke that I was like, oh, that's deeply unique. It ain't, it ain't necessarily the funniest, but he found a good way into the joke because he just said, I was trying to imagine how I would have reacted if I was in Chris Rock's position. And he said, I think I would have run. And so he just made fun of himself. I was right. like, oh, that's a good way to do that because all the jokes are done. Yeah. Uh, my favorite thing now is the faux apology from Chris Rock that people thought was real for a little while. Did you see that? No, that's pretty great. Chris Rock released a statement and he's like, I, I did not know about her alopecia. I'm very sorry to her family and blah, blah, blah. And it wasn't made as a joke. 
But a lot of people were like, oh, look, they made up. And the truth is, Chris Rock hasn't said dick about it. No, and why would he? Yeah. Well, that's great. There's also the conspiracy theory now that um, it was staged and that Chris Rock was wearing a cheek pad. Which is, I, you know, the conspiracy theory that it maybe was staged, fine. Sure. That's not crazy. Um, but the, the idea that he would go out there and do jokes wearing some kind of pad on his face and nobody would notice it. Yeah. And that it would protect you somehow if you got slapped really hard. The funny thing is, there's a moment when I could see why you thought he had a pad on, but it's not. It's swollen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Afterward. There, yeah, there's a moment when he's got a swollen face. I think it's from when he got hit. Yeah, yeah. I'm not positive, <laughs> but I think that's probably what did it. It's all so stupid. I don't hate your theory. Now, real quick, I've got this nice little background. Oh, yeah. That's fun. So, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus. I forgot. Yeah. I was so excited about the fact that that's your yard. Yep. Um, that I forgot there's a game. Yep. Um, this is a really easy one. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say Great Suburban Showdown. That's pretty good. Um, that's not the one I'm thinking of. Um, I will say if I were chatting, if I were chatting with my backyard, I'll say you're crazy and I were talking to my backyard. <laughs> if I were to describe to my backyard how I feel about my backyard. Mm. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. I, I could also say this to my bedroom. Yeah. I uh, you to your bedroom? I could say it to my bedroom as well. Oh, yeah. You could say it uh, to any place you lived. You're my home. That's it. You're my home. Nice. I'm just very excited to have a home. <laughs> as you should be. And it's gorgeous. Thank you. It really is nice. Uh, the view is fantastic. Uh, I have Antioch. A Antioch, yeah. Uh, now, I don't know why nature did this, but this is one of the reasons why you could doubt the existence of God. Truly. I have a lemon tree and I have an orange tree. I have a lemon tree and an orange tree. The orange tree so far has produced two oranges. Okay. The lemon, lemon tree, to my best estimate, has produced 70,000 lemons. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You can't pick them fast enough. They, no one needs them. I know. Is there anywhere you can find guidance about what maybe you are supposed to do when life gives you 70,000 lemons? I wonder what you would do. Yeah, if somebody could tell me what to do. How is that not, by the way, already in a really early Billy Joel song? <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't heard. There, there's a vault. Yeah. Bob. <laughs> Life gave you some lemons, Bob, but as they say. <laughs> uh, oh, shit. Bob, uh, we, no one expected anything from you, Bob. <laughs> Bob, Bob, Robert. Oh, he did have a Roberta, for fuck's sake. Yeah, that's true. Um, this is uh, not heavy trivia tonight. Okay. We would all say his masterpiece album is The Stranger, yeah, right? Sure. I think that's widely agreed. Uh, he does not agree. He has said he has a different album that he believes is his masterpiece. Glass Houses. No. Oh. <laughs> 42nd Street, is that what it is? It's uh, 52nd Street, but 52nd. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, then I'm going to guess that he's being ridiculous and he either thinks an innocent man or river of dreams. <laughs> no. Uh, the nylon curtain. The nylon curtain. Okay, that's fair. Right? Yeah. I kind of agree with him. And you know what? The, the masterpiece doesn't have to be the one with the most hits. No. That's, no, I don't think so. That's valid. And you know, that's funny because that's where it's fine for us to part 
as fan versus artist in our opinion uh. because i'm sure that the nylon curtain and just writing it was a was an absolute artistic joy and trial yes the way those it's also the one it's I, I it is the album that i listened to and the like the first time i heard it um was surprised the greatest number of times oh uh, yeah i could see that okay i only curtain i should have thought of that one that's why i'm here good job yeah the thing is of course no matter how easy the trivia is you know yeah so well it's like the background thing yeah we both oh, yeah. are uh, we're idiots it's <laughs> together that's right hey i'll tell you the song i picked and I'll preemptively say, I don't think I like it. Ah. But I picked it anyway because we've covered I, I, this. We've covered this kind of song so many times. And this one just sticks out to me as being so much this kind of song. <laughs> the song is Hey Girl. Hey Girl. Remember Hey Girl? No. Really? What are you talking about? Oh man, hilarious. All right. Let's make sure I haven't made some weird mistake. I don't think so. Sounds like a Beatles song. It does. That's what I think it's supposed to sound like. Let's see. Where the fuck does this song live? Really? What album is that on? Is it a cover? And so I shouldn't have picked it? Hold on. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, I'm pretty sure that's a bill. Let's look this up. I mean, I, it says song by Billy Joel. Yeah. But I, I've never heard this in my life. Oh, well, that's funny because I hear it more often than I should. On what? Oh. Spotify? Oh, song written by Carol King. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, then that's not my pick. All right. Well, son of a bitch. <laughs> we oh. keep learning. Wow. Okay. So I always assumed it was by him because uh, it seemed dumb enough. <laughs> <laughs> Said as a fan. Yep. I'm going to pick. Oh, you know what? I'm going to pick something off The Stranger. Ooh. And I am going to pick Get It Right the First Time. Oh, I like that. It's a good tune. Yeah, and ironic for you to choose. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. That's great. So that's Carol King, who is a very good lyricist. Yeah. Oh, maybe, maybe did she write it for Billy Joel? And she was like, I need to set write something that sounds like something this guy might write. <laughs> Yeah, uh, hey girl, uh, motorcycles. Yeah, something like that. It is. It's hey girl, da, ba, ba, ba. You're go I'm gonna miss you when you're gone. You must have heard it. I'm gonna listen to it after this, and then I'll fire off an email. <laughs> and it sounds to me, I'll just say this, because we're not gonna talk about it next week. It sounds to me like the opposite of whatever the opposite of a falsetto is. Oh yeah. It's very loud <laughs> and deep, but oh gross. As if that's not your voice. I'm excited. Yeah. Get it right the first time. And now, um, how am I sounding by the way? Did I set up my room pretty good as far as yeah, sounds great to me. All right, good. Um how, and how do I sound to you folks at home just tuning in to TNT for the first time? Phones uh, and phone lines are open. And stay tuned for the all new Late Late with Lopez. Welcome back, Lopez. <laughs> <sighs> uh,